Okay guys, Nicholas here, aka Matice on HeadFi, here for a quick update on the Shanling M2S DAP. There was a question on HeadFi about one-handed usability, so I thought I'd try to answer that question. And um, here it is in my hand, just for reference, um, I do work in a lab and I wear size medium latex gloves. That gives you an idea of hand size. Pretty normal for a guy. Um, I'm not a giant guy. I don't have giant hands, but normal for normal hands, I will show you what it looks like in action with the M2S with the case on. I'll say without the case on, it's got the glass front and back, so it does get a bit slippery. But with the case on, I mean, it's solid in your hand here. So we'll start off with my one caveat about one-handed operation, which is the power button. The power button, if it were right here, I could push it um, and it would easily start up right away, easy to get to. Um, power button isn't there. Power button is over on the right side, so you're going to have to shift it in your hand and then, uh, yeah, or uh, so uh, it's not power button is not optimally placed for one-handed operation for a right-handed person. Now, I've got the DAP started, so let's go through a little bit of the functionality with one hand. So, here we are. I have, um, oh yeah, sorry, I've connected to my phone. Actually, that's a great feature. Let's just go into that real fast. Bluetooth, it's um, just started up, connected with my phone, and um, the reason I did that was because I went on my phone last night. I found out the Future Sound of London just came out with, came out with a new release. I went on their website, downloaded it, and was jamming it on the M2S really quickly. I, I like that feature. I like that dApps are building that in now, being a Bluetooth receiver for your smartphone. Cool stuff. I'm going to press the return key to disconnect here. Actually, let's go down to Bluetooth and we're going to turn it off. This will give you some idea of functionality. I'm going to go down to backlight timer and I'm going to turn it off. There we go. Okay, so you're in your DAP. What do you want to do? I have not actually scanned in my card. I don't care about them. People who know me know I am a file browser guy, so I'll go to file browser, TF card. Now there are a couple ways you can scroll through your music. You can either go like this, you know, let's just scroll through, okay? Or you can push the, um, so the buttons here on the left-hand side of the device, I would use my middle finger for those. And if I press up, it scrolls up through the list. Um, if I scroll down, it goes down through the list, bam, 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 right? Bam, bam, bam. You can try and use your, oh, see there's a little faux pas. Um, I just hit this, try to use my index finger. So use your middle finger for this. This is one area where the case could use just a little bit bigger cutout so I could get to the upper button a little bit easier. Um, but again, here you can scroll through the list with your finger pretty easily, or your thumb pretty easily. Um, if you need to, zoom down through your list quickly. You can just use your left finger. You can hold it down and it just keeps rotating through. So you can, if you have a really long list, you can really quickly scroll through it using these kind of page up, um, page down feature here. So I will say the page up feature is a little bit harder to get to, right? Not so easy for me. Page down though, really easy for me. Okay, so then um, let's, you know, start some music. Bam. Um, classic album by Otecker. Bam, so we started to start some music here. Music's playing. Um, you want to skip to the next song, of course. That's easy. Skip to the next song. You want to skip back. A little, a little more of a finger gymnastics, but doable. Press the middle button to pause it. Graze out the screen a little bit, indicating you paused it. Press play again, and you're off. And, um, what else? Going back, or here's where you can raise volume or lower. I kind of like this graphic. I think it's pretty sweet looking. Um, gives you a good visual indicator, not only with the number, but also with the bars kind of going up here of how loud you're getting. So that's interesting. Haven't seen that before. Um, 
or haven't seen that type of graphic before in a DAP. Maybe others have it and I just haven't seen it. Cool. I'll go back to my standard 20. And here you can do things like press the um, middle of the control knob there and you can add your song to a playlist. You can go into the play settings. You got um, system settings. You can delete the song, which or you can go to play mode. I never delete songs on a DAP. I always do. I manage my card on my computer, so I don't care about that. Um, yeah, you can get to quite a few different, or has quite a few different quick shortcuts, which is cool. Um, one other thing I like about the Shanling DAPs right now is you look at the top of the screen. We can see it's in the now playing screen. Um, we're at volume 20. The battery, I ran it down about halfway. And you can see the time. That's kind of nice. It tells you the time right there in the middle of the top bar. Okay, so let's go back. Backs out through the files. Again, you can hold down and you can go into different browse modes. So if I'd scan in my card, I could go to browse by artist, browse by albums, add to a playlist, delete file. I don't want to do any of those. Come back out. Same thing here. I can delete a folder if I want. I'm not into that. I don't want to delete Autacker because I like them. Here, again, I can delete a folder. Um, up here, I can delete. Wow, I, I really wouldn't want to delete that folder. That would take a while to transfer all those FLAC files over to my card. Bad news. All right, and you're back out at the TF card. Back out. Main menu. I like this. It's circular. It goes well with the scroll wheel, and it shows you the album art. And if um, the one thing you can't do in here, though, is you can never adjust the volume while you, while you are in the menu or any of the menu lists. So you're stuck with the scroll wheel just being a scroll wheel, right? Um, and if you want to play pause, you can play pause it from here. It grays it out again, gives you the little play indicator. Push it again. Bam, you're off to the races. So if it's too loud for some reason, you can always do like a quick pause in here. Go to the settings you want. And, um, and then go back up to now playing and start playing again if you want to. So let's go back to now playing. Um, there's another shortcut where if you just hold down the back button, it takes you straight into now playing menu. Um, and vice versa, I believe. So go to now playing by a long press, long press again, and you're back in. And I think that's anywhere you're here. So if I even go down to like file browser, if I do a long press on that guy on the return button, goes back to now playing screen. So that was a little bit of one handed operation with my right hand. And I, I said I would try it with my left hand. I'm not a left hander. So for me, this is interesting because this is actually easier to get to the buttons over here, so I can get to these really easily with my thumb, easier than I could with my right middle finger. The um, power button is really easy to get to without doing hand gymnastics with my right index finger. I can get to the back button really easily with my left index finger. Um, the one thing I want to try here, though, is scrolling. Like, I can scroll, you know, uh, scrolling back is a little harder with my index finger though, but scrolling up through things isn't too bad. I think that'll be the limiting factor with the control knob with left-handers is how comfortable you feel when you're like doing this kind of scrolling. Um, the nice thing is you can fine-tune it, I guess, and you can just go, okay, page down, um, you know, page up. That's easier with my left hand. So I think it's pretty good. For left-handers, you'll have to you have to figure that out on your own. You know, watch my video here. You're looking at it. Is it something you feel comfortable doing? It's to me, it's a little clunky with my left hand. Um, and either with the left or the right hand, one thing I pointed out in my recent head fi post is it's still not super fast, right? I mean, I guess this is pretty fast. I'm doing pretty well with that. It's pretty responsive. Um, First, I was thinking maybe, you know, using two fingers would be faster. I may need to go back and edit my post because it seems like I'm actually doing, or I actually feel like it's easier to scroll with one thumb and just scroll like that. So um, I'm going to go back and edit my post. I changed my mind. It's easier to go with 
just one hand with my thumb rather than two fingers. So I admit that I was wrong about that, and that's okay. Um, so there you go. You got a little bit more about the Shanling M2S, um, recent update on the thread. Music Day just posted a mini review, so that's cool. Um, Glass Monkey in the UK was organizing a mini tour, and Music Day just put up his thoughts on it. And um, people should go check that out. I don't know how long he had with it before he posted that, but I have to go look at that in a little more detail. Uh, my thoughts on this so far, if you look on the thread on HeadFi, I posted some frequency response curves where I tested out um, some high sensitivity, low impedance, hybrid and multi-BA in-ear monitors. And I did that because the uh, M2S does have high output impedance. It's around 4.7, 4.8 ohms output impedance. So, you know, it could alter the frequency response of your hybrids or multi-BA monitors. Um, luckily, it showed pretty minimal impact. It did show a couple of decibel drop in the base region, but, you know, it's nothing drastic. So, you know, if anything, it might make your in-ear monitors, the um, hybrid or multi-BA, or at least the ones I tested, the few I tested it, and, you know, it might give them just the, um, a, it might give them the appearance of having a little more clarity, but not a major sound signature change. So that was good. That was refreshing. And I know um, Micah, a.k.a. Glass Monkey, said that he was using the Kaiser 10, the Noble Kaiser 10, and that he found them really enjoyable. He didn't notice, or at least he didn't note in his post um, that he saw a major sound or heard a major sound signature change. So I think we're pretty good with the uh, 4.7, 4.8 ohm output impedance. I know my buddies on HeadFi, who I let try, my Shanling M2, the original one, they did not say that they found the high output impedance. Um, they, it wasn't a knock against it for them. They didn't find that to be troublesome with their hybrid or multi-BA IEM. So you might notice it, you might not like it, but the people who've done some real world testing have not dinged it so far, at least not many of them. I know Hi-Fi Chris didn't like, or he did notice it, but um, I didn't notice significant changes and neither of some of my buddies have loaned out my gear to. I did notice it with something like the SoundAware M1 Ester Analog that has 10 ohm output impedance. That was immediately noticeable. Pretty dramatic changes in sound, sound signature for my multi-BA IEM and hybrids. And that was easily noticeable in the FR curves I generated as well. So I feel pretty good about the uh, M2S playing nicely with the gear, at least that I have. So that is cool. Um, what else? People have been asking about M2S versus N3. These guys are the competitors right now. Um, <clears throat> so my my gut feeling on that is going to be that the Cayenne N3 is going to give you a slightly warmed up reference sound signature. Um, so if you're into that, the N3 would be a better choice for you. I know Alex, a.k.a. Twister6, said he thinks the N3 sounds um, very, very close to the Cayenne i5, except for the sound stage is a little more constricted on the N3. Um, I think they, they are tuned very similarly. The one thing that I feel like on the N3 is I do feel like it's a little, little lacking in clarity, a little rolled off. Um, it's great for the price point. It's great for such a small DAP, but I don't think it's quite up to snuff with the i5. Um, this guy, the M2S, However, I feel like this is a little different. This is more on the musical side. Shanling typically goes for that analog type sound. So for this one, I feel like it's got, I don't know if it's quite analog. I think this one sounds a little more fun to me. I listened to it with some 
um, earbuds that are a little V-shaped, and I got good bass emphasis with this, maybe even a little more than I was looking for with those earbuds. Um, the clarity was pretty good, but the bass on those was coming out a little more than I would like. So I think this would be uh, um, maybe a warmer sound signature, more fun sound signature than the um, than the N3. I still need to do some more listening and hook it up to a switcher and do some more do some rapid cycling between this. So do a little volume matching, do some rapid cycling between this and my N3, and I'll have a better answer for you guys in the upcoming days. Anyway, I'm going to end it there. Um, dinner time for me. Just wanted to do a real quick video and show you a little more about the Shandling M2S. And um, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I will be back soon-ish with more. And until next time, happy listening, guys. Bye-bye.